Hey everybody, welcome back. It is I, Uncle Greg, a.k.a. the Free American Spirit. And this video starts a series. I'm going to build a pressure washing rig, okay, but it's really dedicated, especially this first one, to anybody that wants to start a service business. And there's some things you need to know, okay? And then we'll get into how to build a rig, and we're going to be specifically doing it for people that are on a budget or have no money and ways that you can do things a little cheaper. So number one, you want to start a business. You know, the first thing is, it's a really big commitment, guys. So what you need to do, now I'm going to talk in pressure washing talk, but this would apply to any business. First is, you need to know, are you going to do it as a one-man guy, okay? And you're going to take care of your family. That's, that's one thing. The next step up is you're going to start building, you know, a bigger business and you're going to hire a helper. Once you hire a helper, you now open up another can of worms, workman's comp, social security, more licensing. So you go from a DBA to an LLC and on and on and on it goes. Okay. Then the next thing is, are you going to do it part time? Now, if you're going to do it part time, just earn a little extra cash. That's great if you're kind of living at home, okay, and where you're going to college and people are paying your bills, right? Or you're just really young and you're just going to do some things in the neighborhood and you just want some spending money. But, you know, it's a big investment for a young kid to take on. Um, next, Or it could be like your senior citizen like me. I can't work full time, okay? There's no way. On a good day, I can put in three or four hours at the best. And those are only a couple times a month. You know, I'm old, I'm wore out, I have health issues and whatever. So, you know, you really need to decide up front what you want to be when you grow up, so to speak. Now, the next thing is you need to write it down. You need to write a plan. Now, plans can change, and they obviously will, but write a plan out. I'm going to be a one-man guy. I'm going to set up a, a rig whether it's lawn mowers or pressure washings inside a van or inside the back of a truck, or I'm going to haul a trailer, you know, I'm going to have this gallon per minute unit. I'm going to have soft wash. I'm going to, you know, do whatever driveways, house wash, roof wash, whatever it is, you form an outline. The next step is, and this is the most serious is some kind of commitment. Okay. And I think we already touched on that, but the point is, you're going to listen to all these gurus on YouTube, okay? And they're wanting to sell you all kinds of stuff. Nothing wrong with selling you things, making them money. They're very successful. Some are better than others as far as honesty goes, let's just say. But we're not going to get into that. That's another video. But I'm sure I'm going to tee off a lot of people as this series goes on. But the next thing is, when you're talking about commitment, there's two parts to that. One is you need to go get a job with whoever it is that's in that industry you want to be in and work for them a couple of days. So pressure washing, go call the big companies up. They're always looking for helpers. Work for those guys for a week or two because a lot of times you're going to find out it all sounded great on YouTube when they said, you're going to make a thousand a day. It's like falling off a log. It's so easy, you know. Well, kind of easy, but, you know, this is just a job and you're going to see how hard it is to do a eight, ten, 12 hour a day, depending on how big the company is, how many people, and you'll kind of be lucky. At least you'll have two people on a job versus doing it yourself. So once you get done working for a guy for a couple of times, you know, and you kind of get it figured out and you cement in your brain. Yeah, I like this. I can do this because there's nothing worse than going out and spending a ton of money. And then people realize, Hey man, you know, this ain't like a work job, eight hours, a day you collect the paycheck and go home. This is constant, 24 hours a day, you know, meeting people, contacting people, you know, all kinds of things you got to do. And if you have no money, you know, if you're a rich kid, heck, you can go out there and pay the guy for the CMR and pay the guy for the marketing and pay the guy for all this. It'll take you a long time to recoup that money. But if you didn't do that first step, you're going to realize you just spent 40, 50 grand and real quick in a heartbeat. And now you're loaded up on work and you don't even like it, you know, and eventually you can get out of it. Maybe you hire a couple people on and 
they do all the work and you just start delegating, but that's, you know, that's down the road. So before you spend a dime on anything, you, you need to do that little bit of research and you need to have that plan outlined and you need to make sure that you have an action, you know, commitment before you spend a ton of money. Now this next video, I'm going to show you what I would tell you to buy first and I'm going to show you how I save some money on it. And you know what? I'm not perfect. There's a million ways to skin a cat. Okay. And once again, it depends on, you know, do you have money to do this stuff? Do you have a part-time job? I will tell you that part of being committed and the biggest point is not just determination, but it's, um, what is the word I am looking for? Discipline. If you are broke, like most of us were when we started off, and you're facing the challenge of buying several thousand dollars of equipment to get started. I know you can buy other junk for 500 bucks and not know what you're doing and go mess everybody's house up and it will be a start. But, you know, realistically, if you're going to start a business, you're probably going to start off with about five to six grand to get a halfway decent rig. Some people have done it cheaper, but, you know, and you're, little website and your Facebook page and your Google listing. And speaking about Google listings, my listings, I've fallen from grace from Google. I got injured, you know, went through COVID, got injured, had some medical problems and then the family had medical problems, whatever. And so I kind of didn't do anything for about two years. I always kept on top of my listing, you know, and I'd say, yeah, I'm open this, that, and the other, but I wasn't doing any work. I can't. And, uh, so I decided to change the name of my company and holy moly, when I changed the name of the company on Google listens, it's like, I fell from grace. I was cast down with the sodomites. It's like, I don't exist unless you actually look up the website. So if you do a pretrial or something or whatever, just save your Google listing for a little bit until you have that duck in order. Because if you start off one way and then you go change the name thinking, you know, well, I don't like pressure wires and I'm going to open up an electric company or a lawn mowing company. You're going to face an issue. So just, just do your free Facebook page, go to GoDaddy, do the cheapest website you can go to all the little spaces, things like that. But discipline. The other thing is I got off track here. You need to be able to say, Hey, if I don't have a job, okay. So who are you? Are you living at home and parents are paying your bills. Do you have a good job where you're having some disposable income, you know, where you can save up and buy things little at a time, or are you just broke, you know, you're 20 years old, you don't have a job or whatever, or you do have a job, you're paying rent and there's like hardly anything over, then you have to have discipline. You have to be able to put a plan together and say, you know, by this time I'm buying a trailer, by this time I'm buying a pump, by this time I'm buying all the fittings. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to sacrifice some stuff. You know, that cup of coffee you have every day or two at the, uh, at the seven 11 or whatever buck of coffee, two bucks of coffee, whatever it is, that's anywhere from 30 bucks a month to 90 bucks a month, depending on how much the coffee is, you know, those cigarettes you smoke. I know you don't understand uncle Greg. It's an addiction. I can't do it. I'll die. I smoked 40 years and here's the bottom line. One is I decided to smoke to be cool or whatever reason it was back in the, I guess, late 60s. And then one day I said, you know what? These are five bucks a pack. So even if you only smoke one pack, that's 150 bucks a month. That buys a lot of fittings. That buys hoses. Okay. <clears throat> if you drink, same thing. Oh my God, you don't understand. I'm addicted. I have to have, you know what? I was live at a party. I'd go out and spend three, four, five hundred dollars, whatever is in my pocket, you know, buying everybody's drinks, having a good old time. I get it. But the point is you give that up. So any extra things you have, it's called sacrifice. And when you're a business owner, and this is a big point, you're going to sacrifice. You're going to work 14 hour days. You're going to be working in some capacity, whether you're doing your social media, you're doing your advertisements, handing them out, door hangers, whatever, whether you're shaking hands, kissing babies, trying to meet people and tell them who you are, whether you're going out doing free jobs in the neighborhood to get some experience and or 
you know, practice in or just to, to show people what you can do. You know what I'm saying? You're working. You're going to be fielding calls. You're going to be doing emails. You're going to be doing all kinds of stuff that you don't do today. So discipline, sacrifice, if you're not prepared for that, you don't need to be in the service business. If you're not prepared for 10 and 12 hour days, with the exception of, you know, you're just going to do one job a week or three jobs a month, or whatever, just to make a little extra income, then you really don't need to be in business because and that doesn't matter what business it is. You know, it's way better. You know, I had a great job at corporate and for 10 years prior to getting a corporate job, I ran a successful company. I was making pretty good money, but when this corporate job came along by sheer stroke of luck, because I just happened to bump into a guy when I was putting in some ads in the classified sections in the newspaper, he hired me and I was making as much there, you know, and I was working eight hours a day and I was making actually more than I was bringing home. And I didn't have to, you know, clean drains and go sweat my ass off and do all this other stuff and argue with customers and kiss people's rear end and whatever, you know. But after having that job a couple of years, I always just kept going back and opening up a part-time, you know, plumbing and sewer and uh, pressure washing. Every state that I went to with this job, I would just open up and get the license or whatever I needed. And I do that kind of part-time you know, and bring extra money in. And mostly it was because my reps couldn't afford plumbers and they couldn't afford drain cleaners and things like that. But I just enjoyed that kind of work. It was always in my blood because I've been doing it since the 60s. So let me let you go. If you get value out of the video, thumbs up, like. If, you know, there won't be any associate links in this video because I'm not telling you about anything yet. But in the next video, we're going to talk about the first thing I would buy. All right. Later, Gators.